Hello church, it's great to see you. Why don't you stand to your feet this morning if you, if you haven't already. We're gonna praise God together. Hands up, hey!
Great is your faithfulness. 
praise your faithfulness to me. Yes, you are. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting same I will praise, I will praise your church. It's wonderful to see everybody here today. We're going to take uh, communion together now, so please be seated. If you uh, didn't get a chance to pick up one of these individual servings uh, on your way in uh, this morning, then if you put your hand up now, our team will uh, bring one to you. That's great. I think everybody's been served. So, taking communion together, it's our opportunity to remember Jesus, to remember what he's done for us, and to respond to him. 
and that's what we're going to do today. So, if you want to know Jesus or you're trying to find faith and what Christianity is all about, then this part of the service is absolutely for you. In the Gospels, we read that the disciples prepared for what we're about to do now. Part of our preparation is working out how to get into this uh, little individual serving. Um, and we'll come back to that shortly. So don't worry about that for now. I promise I'll give you time to do that later. Just hold on to it for now and then we'll eat together. The most important part of our preparation is how we prepare ourselves. We should pause, we should think, we should reflect and we should examine ourselves. Whilst we're preparing, let's remember that Jesus has eagerly desired to be with us right now. Maybe prepare by thinking about how much Jesus wants to share this time with you, even eating a simple cracker and some juice. If you don't really know Jesus yet, or maybe it's been a while since you've been in relationship with him, maybe in this moment it's a perfect opportunity to ask him to make himself real to you as you eat and drink today. I'm just going to give us a moment to prepare ourselves right now. Now that we're beginning to remember Jesus together, I'm going to read some verses from the Bible that are all about Jesus and about how amazing he is. In the book of Philippians, it says of Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus, you are amazing. Thank you. Let's open the pots together. There are two lids, one that lets you into the cracker and one that lets you into the juice. And when you're ready, let's eat and drink together. And as we do, let's continue to remember Jesus. Let's thank him in our minds and in our hearts for everything that he is and everything that he's done for us. Thank you, Jesus, for humbling yourself and for dying such a brutal death on the cross. Thank you that you did this even though you are the almighty one, the all-knowing one, the all-powerful creator of the heavens and the earth. As we eat this bread together, we say thank you. Because of your sacrifice, we can know salvation and life to the full. We can know your peace and wisdom and we can know your wholeness that replaces our brokenness. As we take this cup, we remember that you poured yourself out for us 
Jesus, thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for your forgiveness of sins. Thank you for reconciliation with Almighty God. Thank you that you gave yourself completely. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Andy. Hey, can we thank Andy for leading us in that moment? How are we doing, church? We okay? It's great to see you looking, looking great. Hey, I want to say a, a really warm welcome to you. Uh, if you are here joining us here at Heart Church, whether you've been coming for a long time or for the first time, we're just so happy that you're, you're here with us and you can join us here at church. But especially if you are here for the first time or maybe you've been coming for a couple of weeks and you're joining us in Heart Church, we are really, really happy that you're, you're here. And we would love if you didn't head off after the service. We would, we've got some team who would love to say hi to you and get to know you and help you with how you can get involved. You know, We've got so many ways you can get involved here at Heart Church. So you can head out of the, uh, of the doors outside, outside the atrium after the service, outside these doors through to the atrium. We've got an amazing team of people. Uh, there's a stand there that says the Get Involved stand. They would love to speak to you, help you get connected. You can also head to heart.church forward slash connect for all the amazing ways you can get connected here at Heart Church. Uh, if you are Heart Youth Year 7 and 8, you can head out to your service also. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. You can head out, follow your leaders to your service. It's going to be great. Are we doing well, church? Are we good today? Hey, I've got a couple of things I'd like to share with you today that are coming up in the life of Heart Church. Firstly, we do, many of you know, we do Heart Prayer uh, on the first Wednesday of every month in person. And on the third Wednesday in the morning, of every month. We do heart prayer in the morning and it's on Zoom. It's just a great opportunity to get together as a church and pray together. And you know, something happens when we pray together as a church. So, hey, I want to invite you to be a part of that. If you head to heart.church forward slash prayer, you can find the Zoom link 7 a.m. this Wednesday on the 15th of March online on Zoom. It's going to be great to pray together. Hey, was anyone here for Vision Sunday last week? Hey, I, I was really blown away by all the amazing things Pastor Malcolm had to share with us and the journey we're going to be going on as a church family this year. And one of the amazing things he talked about was life groups. And we want to be talking a little bit about life groups today. So why don't you turn your attention to the screen for this video? We lead a life group because uh, you can get to know people and they can know you. And we just love opening our home and inviting people in. You know, in a big church, it's, it's really hard to get to know every single person, but we have these smaller communities so that we are known, so we are cared for, so we are discipled. We go outside for our life group because it's great to be outdoors and get fresh air and exercise. It takes the pressure off meeting in a home, but you've got children around, things like that. I think someone who's looking for fellowship and also um, wanting to grow in God, they would benefit from joining a life group. We wanted to make our children connect with church, not just on a Sunday, but to connect with the people who were actually around them. We've benefited personally and families in our life group. We would hope that they've benefited from us. I didn't see myself as a leader before, but it's actually given me confidence. Sometimes it's good to step out of your comfort zone, even when you don't feel like you, you can be a leader, because actually doing it, God will help you and give you the confidence and the skills you need to be able to do it. Amazing. Wow, that's amazing. Hey, anybody enjoy that video? Seen all the amazing life groups we have here at Heart Church? Hey, this is Ash Ling. She's going to chat to us a little bit more about that. But Ash, we saw a few great things about life groups. Talk to us a bit more about life groups. Yeah, definitely. So hopefully from that video, you have got a little bit of a glimpse into what a life group could look like. But life groups really at Heart Church are our way of building community. They're our way of ensuring that people are known and cared for within this bigger community of people. Um, life groups really are environments where we get to engage with the Bible, where we get to pray together, and where we get to develop uh, new leaders. Amazing. And, you know, Pastor Malcolm, I mentioned earlier, Pastor Malcolm talked a bit about life groups this year. And really, we're wanting to have more leaders be a part of joining and leading a life group. 
How do how do we get involved in that? Yeah, amazing. It was so great last week to hear at Vision Sunday, Pastor Malcolm's heart to raise up leaders to get involved with with leading life groups. Um, and it was yeah really encouraging for him to say that actually so many of us in this room could actually do that, and that we need to give ourselves permission to give it, to give that a go. Um, our heart really is that every single person in this community is part of a life group, is part of a smaller community group of people. Um, So we're asking today, could you consider leading a life group? Could that be something that you could potentially explore? The role really of a life group leader, Gideon, is facilitating a monthly or a fortnightly gathering of people. Um, This could be based around an activity or just based around a hot drink in your home. Amazing, amazing. So really practically, if if I'm hearing this and I'm like, oh, I could be a life group leader, what do I do? Who do I speak to? Yeah, great. So if this idea of being a life group leader is something that you think you could potentially explore, maybe for you it feels like something that you don't feel ready for right away or something that you'd love to do but you don't feel like you have the space in your home to host a group or something that you'd love to do but you actually you wouldn't want to do it alone. If that applies to you, come and speak to us. We'd love to, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. And also, if you're in this room and you're not part of a life group and you'd also like to join one, again, come and speak to us. We're going to have two stands um, this, this, this morning in our atrium cafe and in our reception. We've got some great team there that would love to speak to you. Um, so come and speak to us, or again, you can head to our website and have a look at the groups there. Amazing. Yeah, you can head to our website, heart.church forward slash life groups if you would like to lead a life group or be a part of one ash right so yeah fantastic can we thank ashling so great that we have uh, our life groups to help us you know connect with each other and build relationships with each other as a church well we've come to that part of our service where we get to give right now of our tithes and our offerings and some of the ways you can give are going to Um, appear on the screen just behind me and if you'd like to make use of contactless giving or give by cash you can also do so in just a moment at the back of the room but church I just want to encourage us in this moment and it can be such a a mundane thing that we do when we when we have church we we come to that time of our service where we give of our tithes and our offerings but I want to encourage us right now I love that song that new song that we sang earlier talking about the goodness of God and thanking God. That first song, that one that we wrote. And the bridge, I love the bridge. It says, For your goodness and mercy, we thank you, Lord. For redeeming our failures, we thank you, Lord. For the breath in our lungs, we thank you, Lord. For the clothes on our backs, we thank you, Lord. For our friends and our family, we thank you, Lord. For the food on our table, we thank you, Lord. Because you've been so faithful, we thank you, Lord. And I'm so grateful that we have this moment where we get to give of our tithes and our offerings, not out of obligation, not because we have to, but because of the many blessings for our friends and our family, for the food on our table, for His provision in our lives, for all the things that He's done for us, not out of compulsion, but out of an overflow of gratitude. Is anybody thankful for the good things God has done in their lives? So this moment is about that, about giving God thanks. So let's take a moment right now to give. great to see people making use of our giving at the back. You can continue to use that in just a moment. Church, why don't you stand with me as I pray and thank God for our giving. Father, we're just so grateful. We just want to say thank you 
for all your many blessings, for your provision, for your protection. God, we just say thank you, Lord. In this moment, we come and we give you all the gratitude for all the little things, all the big things. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, why don't you remain standing? If you are uh, a parent of a preschooler, so if you are, you have a child who's one to four, you can head out to your program right now. But for parents of children under the age of one, we have our parenting room available also for you to use. If you have signed up for Growth Track, you can head out through the doors. You can see uh, that sign over there, Joe's holding up. If you've signed up for Growth Track also, you can head out through those doors. But for the rest of us, why don't you turn around to the person next to you and to the person to the side of you and connect with each other. Say hi to somebody. Awesome. Why don't we come back together, church? It's so great that we're connecting with each other and speaking with each other. We can carry on our chats after in the atrium. Great to see you. Hey, if you're not standing, can I invite you to stand to your feet all across the place? We're going to worship, sing together in just a moment. In just a moment, we're going to have Pastor Malcolm come and speak to us. And I'm really, really looking forward to this. Let's raise our faith, raise our expectation as we come to hear what he's going to say to us. But you know, church, we're going to sing this song. We've sang it before. It's one that we've written here in our, in our church. And it talks about how I'm walking out of the grave. And how many of you know that we have a God of the victory? Where we have a God who defeated death and the grave. And he's the king of resurrection. And you know, the, the Bible says the same power that raised Jesus from a buried grave lives inside of you and me. What does that mean? It means that for us in our own lives, we can walk out of our grave. The dead things in our life can rise. So can I, can I implore you to raise your expectation in this moment as we sing this song that I'm going to walk out of my grave. Come on, let's sing it with faith. Sing this out. 
every person in this room today the devil thought he had us but we thank you for your love for your grace and for your mercy we thank you for the power of resurrection we thank you that you defeated death and we thank you that through you we also overcome death we thank you oh God that you are a God of life You're a God of resurrection power. And Father, in Jesus' Name, as we stand here in Your presence today, we pray that we will get a deeper understanding, a deeper revelation of that power in each of our lives. We thank You that in Jesus, we are overcomers. We thank You in Jesus 
that Father God, this is not about death, it's about life, it's about hope, it's about freedom, it's about the reality that You are a way maker. We thank You, O oh God, that You are opening doors. Father, we know things, we know some things have been closed down, we know some doors have been closed, but Father, such is Your plan towards us, that Father, we thank You that those things are only to do us good. You are a God of grace and You're a God of hope and You are opening up a way for us. And therefore we shall rejoice, we shall celebrate because we know that God has only good plans for our lives. In Jesus' Name and everyone said, Amen, Amen. God bless you, thank you. Please be seated. Amazing. What a joy, what a joy to be here again. Um, Last Sunday was, of course, Vision Sunday. Uh, that's available online where we, we talk about who we are as a church, but also um, about what our road of travel is um, for, this coming, for this coming year. And so with that in mind, um, today I'm going to um, revisit uh, some of what I talked about um, last week because uh, repetition is the mother of all learning, and uh, it's, the, it's appropriate just to come and revisit, particularly the aspect of, uh, of what we are focusing on this year, which was three words, go, sow, and grow. And uh, I mentioned that these are, these are distinct, but they also kind of uh, flow into, into each other. Both go, sow, and grow are action words. And uh, it's, it's an understanding that as the church of Jesus Christ, as the body of Christ, um, there is a call, there is a call to action. Um, so these are the three words that I felt um, the Lord lay on my heart. And we're just going to work our way through um, again. Um, the scripture in Matthew 28, verses 18 to 19 that I led from, uh, from this first section of Go was, uh, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I, I love this because it, it helps us to... Um, understand that Jesus has authority and therefore in His name, we also have authority. And He says, He said, therefore, go. Go and make disciples. He didn't say go and make converts. He said go and make disciples. And uh, it's always such a joy to see people responding to the gospel uh, and it's also good to remember that that is the beginning of a journey. It's a beginning of development. It's a beginning. It's beginning of growth, and it's beginning of of a life change. And making disciples um, in 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 many ways is about my experience and growth, helping you to grow. In this regard, we need each other. We need each, we need each other. No one has got all the answers. We, 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 need, we need each other to grow in the things, in the things of God. Um, and of course, um, very much uh, Jesus points us towards baptism. And you know, I want to encourage you that if you, if you know... Uh, Jesus, if you've asked Jesus to come into your life and you're not yet baptized, I want to I wanna encourage you to be baptized. I do think that um, there's, been, that there's been this thinking in churches over the years that almost like baptism is a reward for good behavior. You know, you get everything sorted and then, and then you get baptized. And uh, that is not at all. Baptism is part of the repentance process. And in fact, um, trying to get myself sorted before I'm baptized is a bit like trying to get myself clean before I take a shower. 
It's like, well, why? Why would you be trying to do that? You know, baptism is part of the repentance process. And in fact, there is a supernatural aspect to it that brings empowerment to my discipleship process. It's not just a ritual or uh, something for, to do in the church. It, there is something powerful that happens where the, the past is cut, up, cut off. And, um, and uh, the, the, <laughs> we're talking about resurrection at the beginning of our service. The, the picture is a, a death of the old life and a resurrection to the new life as you come out of the, come out of the water. Jesus, in, in giving us authority, is helping us to understand that we are influencers um, of our environments. We, we, are, we are called to influence the environments around us. And I used the language last week of a people, we're a people on a mission. Jesus is not a a secret to be kept. But then I would also want to say um, that we, we, lead, we lead more by example and not with brute force and ignorance. You know, I, I think that we live in a culture in this day and age where there's a war of words. Everyone's speaking. Everyone's got an opinion. Everyone's got something to say. Social media is full of it. Everyone's expressing their opinions. And so there are thoughts, there are words, there are philosophies. You know, um, Paul said, I didn't come to you with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. So we shouldn't reduce the gospel to only wise and persuasive words. Um, there needs to be a demonstration in our life that those words, the gospel, has impacted our life. See, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us that we're, we're gifted with love, with joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. Those things, through the Spirit, should be part of our lives. It's a supernatural thing. It's not that I, um, oh, like I need to keep trying harder. I need to keep trying harder. You know, I'm, I'm out here trying. It's actually not that. The gospel is the truth that, that there is help in this regard. This, this resurrection power, this life is here to help me do things which I cannot do on my own. I try and I fail. I will and I will keep failing because I do not have the ability to maintain these things in my life. But the Holy Spirit is there to help me and call these things things out. And these essentially are the attributes that make us distinct from those who don't know the Lord. So beyond the things that we say, using the right words, saying the right things, there should be something about our life that speaks louder. St. Francis of Assisi said this, by all means preach the gospel and if necessary, use words. Think about that for a moment. In other words, there should be something about my life that preaches the gospel every day without me even opening my mouth. There should be something about my life that speaks about the reality of Jesus without me opening my mouth. But then there will be times where it will be necessary to do that. By all means, preach the gospel and if necessary, use words. Matthew says he is another way 
to put it in Matthew 5. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colours in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make, make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God. This generous Father in heaven. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up to God. There's something about, something about me, something about you, where, where the Holy Spirit is that is different, that feels different. The church is the hope of the world and not just a refuge from it. I understand that, you know, I know what it is to have a tough week. I know what it is to go through tough times. And I know there are many times when the church is a refuge, but it's not just a refuge. The church of Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. And, and there is something about you and I that speaks of hope, this, this resurrection power, this, this incredible Jesus. Jesus makes the difference. You know, you know what I was like before. You know those things that, that the devil had me over. You know those things that I'm working through. But Jesus, Jesus is bringing me through. Jesus is making a way. I, I, there are some things that I'm battling right now, but Jesus is helping me every day. There are some things I don't do anymore, not just because I've gritted my teeth and said I'm not going to do it anymore. There are some things that I don't do anymore because Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has stopped those things in my life. And yes, I've had to cooperate with the process, of course, but, but he enables me. Uh, uh, and as I cooperate, I see the things that held me, held me back, held me down. They do not hold me anymore. Let's dare to live what we say we believe. Our light is meant to shine, not to be hidden. And I really want to emphasize the importance of understanding. This is not about just us trying harder and harder to be better people. It's actually about us giving up and saying, I can't be better. Jesus, help me. I need you because I can't do this if you don't help me. I'm not going to make it. But I can tell you, help you, he will. And through him, my believing will impact my behavior. We've got to, as a, as a church community, put down our roots. We've got to, as a church community, go deeper. We, we need something that goes beyond building a house on a sand. We need the kind of faith that is robust enough to withstand the storm. Because storms, it's not if the storms come. The storms will come. But our faith, we need to have built the kind of faith that withstands the storm. And you don't, you don't just wait for the storm to come. You know, I think that, you know, maybe we've all been there, you know, like we're just going along and, uh, and then something hits and, you know, there's nothing like that to boost your prayer life, is there? Oh, God, I'm sorry. Oh, God, oh, forgive me. Oh, God. You know, I mean, there are prayers paid in, casualty, uh, in, in, in casualties up, up and down the land. Oh, God, if you just get me through this, I'll, 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 I'll serve you forever. You know those prayers are prayed. 
And, you know, unfortunately, they, God gets us through and then we can quickly, we can quickly forget. But we need, we need to build that kind, with the help of God, we need to be the kind of people who can stand by faith against the storm. And that means that, means that we've got to be able to be people who engage with the Word of God, because the Word of God is going to help us. It's going to give us life. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give us strength. It's going to give instruction on the way to live. And, and that means that we've got to engage with it. And, you know, it doesn't matter how good a sermon is. It's never going to be good enough to be enough. And it doesn't matter how emotional that soundbite on social media is. It's never going to be enough to get you through. We need to understand the Bible and we need to engage with the Bible. That's why we, uh, we want to give the opportunity for people to become biblically literate. You know, I think that, you know, like, I don't know, say anybody, but, you know, the truth is sometimes we use, we even use great scriptures, but they're out of context. And, 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 and we, we, we snatch we snatch those little things that sound good and say, that's what I'm believing for. But, but what's the point of believing for something that is in, inaccurate when you've got to see it in context? And, uh, you know, not everything that we see out there on social media is in context. So we need to be able to judge appropriately what is right. And the only way we do that is by making sure that we're equipped to do it. That's why we're running this uh, story of the Scriptures um, course. It's going to help us to get a breadth of understanding of how scriptures relate to each other and how we can see Jesus not only in the New Testament but in the Old Testament as well. And that's important. I think that, I think that many of us, and, and please don't read into this, the Bible is the Bible whether it's on, on your phone or not. I've got no str- tr- um, trouble in uh, uh, relating to that. The only negative I would say is that for some of us who have maybe been around a little bit <clears throat> longer, um, you know, and we actually had physical Bibles, it did kind of give you an understanding a bit more of how fits, things fitted together because you had, to, you, you had a physical Bible to work your way through. And it's not quite as easy to do that on, on your phone or on your device. But Anyway, a course like this is going to help you. And we, we are, you know, uh, also, as I mentioned, you know, Mark Ritchie, who is, I described him as um, an Ephesians 4 evangelist. Ephesians is a book in the Bible. It's a letter written by Paul. And in chapter 4, Paul speaks about gifts to the church. In other words, these are gifts that help make the church work. In there is teaching, in there is uh, um, uh, pastoral, in there is the prophetic, but in there is an evangelist. And Mark is an Ephesians 4 evangelist. And he is going to be running uh, the course that he runs, um, which is uh, the Evangelism Masterclass. And that's a fantastic opportunity to be part of, uh, to be in the company who has gotten a, a gift, who's anointed by God, and, uh, and we can learn ways in which we can uh, share, share our faith. You don't have to be uh, an Ephesians 4 gift in order to go because we're all called to do the work, the work of the evangelist. Because the world needs to know about a saviour who loves them and can change their lives. And if we don't talk about it, who's going to talk about it? That's why I was saying last week that we mustn't allow ourselves to be silenced. Maybe some of us need to be silent because we're saying the wrong things. But when we're inspired by the Holy Spirit, saying things in the right heart and the right way, talking about how Jesus has changed our life, it just may inspire someone to begin a journey to faith. So we're called to go to our families, in our places of work, in our places of education, wherever. But we're called to sow. 
in writing his letter to the Corinthians, his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul said this, he said, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. There's nothing difficult to understand about that. If you are going to just give a few seeds, obviously what you get back is going to be less than if you sow many seeds. Um, Galatians 6 says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man receives what he sows. And listen, this isn't just about money. You know, a man receives what he sows can be, if I'm sowing a bad attitude, I shouldn't be overly surprised if I get a bad attitude back. Because I, am, I will get back what I've sown. In fact, usually I get back more than I've sown. <laughs> Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. Why does Paul say to us, let's not become weary in doing good? Because it's easy to become weary in doing good. It's tough sometimes. Sometimes we don't see the results as quickly as we would want. But at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Let me speak to somebody's spirit today. Keep going. Don't give up. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. No one's denying it's tough, but keep trusting. Keep holding on to Jesus. He's going to see you through. Therefore, we have opportunity. As we have, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers, as we have opportunity. <coughs> we should be looking for opportunities to do good wherever we go, but especially with the family of believers. You see, the whole concept of sowing is, as we say in our vision booklet, is about influencing tomorrow today. The truth is, that doesn't have to be a statement in a vision booklet because whether we like it or not, all of us will influence tomorrow by the way we live today. We say in the vision booklet that we are each empowered to reach and influence our own world. We build with the future generations in mind. Together we reach and influence communities, cities and a nation. Amen. I want you to understand something that, you know, we, we, we send out our... Kids, uh, uh, adventure kids, they go out into their teaching. It's not so that you can concentrate during the sermon. It's because we're preparing another generation. We want to build a church. I want to build a church that my grandchildren want to go to. We, we cannot or should not, let me at least say should not. We should not be building a church that is just for our needs. We shouldn't be building a church that just makes me comfortable. We should be building, always thinking about what the generations that are to come. We should be sowing into those generations. And I, I can find other places to, you know, sing some of the old songs and, 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 and uh, you know, immerse myself in some of the things that I used to enjoy. And we've all got our altars along the way where we really met God and that's awesome. But, but that's, that's yesterday. Some things are eternal. Some things are not going to change. The truths and the power of the gospel are not going to change. But the way we do it needs to engage with a younger generation that, that keeps them um, uh, relating to church, but also helps and em empowers them to live in the real world. Thank you for that one little clap there. Did you hear that? I appreciated that. I appreciated that. Because whether we like it or not, we may not be of this world, but we, we live in the real world. And we've got a function in it. And you know what? Uh, Jesus isn't confused about the season that we now live in. 
He's not looking around going, wow, I didn't see this coming. <laughs> he knows. The gospel uh, that he preached is as relevant today as the day it was first released. And it's as powerful today as the day it was first released. And yet in it, we've got responsibilities. Paul is there saying, don't, don't sow to the flesh. In other words, don't just sow to what you want, to what you think you need. Don't just sow to, to uh, the desires that you, that you have because at the end of that, when you sow to what the flesh wants, there's always going to be a hangover. You see, the problem is, the problem is that the, um, don't worry, like, let's not get distracted, whatever is going on. The problem is that we, it's easier to sow to the flesh sometimes because of immediate gratification. Because you get what you want quicker. I always think of that Peter K, Peter K moment when you talk about this, where you, he's m munched his way through a family bar of chocolate and gets down to the last two squares and says, get it away from me. <laughs> get it away from me, I'm not having any more. Do you know what I mean? But it's like you've eaten most of the chocolate, bro. You know, it's like... I, 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 and you, you, at the end of that, you know, it feels, it feels like it's meeting a need quickly. It's doing something quickly, but the truth is that when we sow to the Spirit, it's slow. Isn't it? When I sow to the Spirit, it's slow, but re relief and joy will creep in and there won't be a hangover tomorrow. When we sow good seed, the harvest will come at the proper time and I will be stronger for it. This leads to, to grow. Talk about grow, but, and I, I added on there about being planted because being planted is key to growing. Yeah. Putting down roots is key to growing. And um, I talked about, um, are you here for a takeaway? Are you here for a family meal? Because it is possible to do church in this day and age in a drive-through drive fashion where we come through, we pick up our experience and we go and get on with our lives. But I do not believe that that is what church is meant to be. We need, we need to build an opportunity for a deeper level of fellowship. That's why I'm excited about life groups. It's not just a church program. It's to facilitate something that is a mystery and happens through fellowship, yeah. godly fellowship. Yeah. That's, why, that's why we do it. It's not to look good on Instagram. It's functional. We need a deeper level of fellowship which goes beyond socializing with each other and enjoying one another's company. The Bible says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we'll have fellowship with one another. In other words, as we walk with people who walk in the light, there is a level of fellowship released that would, we wouldn't ordinarily get to. It's a mystery. And we need each other because while I'm waiting for my breakthrough, I need to see some people around me who've got theirs. I need to hear your story. I need to, so tell me again. Tell me again how you made it through. Okay, you're, 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 the thing you're going through right now might not be exactly the thing that I'm going through, but hey, tell me again because, because something happens in me. I get, I get faith for this moment when I hear your story. Something is released in me. Second Peter says this, but growing grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, to Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. In writing to the Ephesians, Ephesians 4, he said, no prolonged infancies among us, please. We'll not tolerate babes in the woods, small children who are easy prey for predators. God wants us to grow up, to know the whole truth and tell it in love. 
like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ who is the source of everything we do. He keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us, nourishing us so that we will grow up healthy in God, robust in love. And if we are gonna be healthy in God, we will inevitably be robust in love. We need each other. And this is in contrast to the spirit of the age where, which promotes the lordship of self. It's about me, my truth, my feelings. And that is cited as, if you prioritise that, that's the route, to hap- uh, the route to happiness. Look out for you. Stand up for you. But as a disciple of Jesus, Making Him Lord means He is on the throne, not me. I do it His way. My mother-in-law uh, used, uh, says this, that I, um, we've said it a lot. Um, I'm not going to even begin to. She sings it as a little Sunday school ditty, but she sings, J is for Jesus, for He takes first place. O is for others, we meet face to face. Y is for you in whatever you do. So put yourself last and spell joy. Some of you will get it later. We need each other. That's why we're talking about praying. It's not to get people to a group because something happens. It's my joy to tell you that, you know, we, we prayed last week for... Uh, for um, uh, um, for um, Jesse April and for um, uh, both for Lily and Sadhu's little girl Zoe. And, and, and there was, by the end of the day, there was improvements. By Tuesday, Jesse was out of hospital. Zoe was out of ICU. And I say that to you because the doctors themselves couldn't quite work out. My God, may God give us some of those kind of situations where the doctors can't really work out what's going on, but they just know they're getting better. And I know, listen, it's great, isn't it? That's a great moment. That's a great moment and we celebrate it and genuinely God intervened and sometimes we pray and we don't see those results as quickly, but we still need to keep praying because who knows what the Lord is doing with our prayers. That's why praying together does make a difference. We want, we want to grow as a community. That's what, again, life, life groups, opportunities to grow uh, and, and develop. And it's right to want to grow and develop and mature in the things of God. We're not here to make God in our image. We are here to say, you are Lord. You are Lord. God is good. God is great. Our God is not a weak God. There is nobody like Him. And we won't apologise for Him because He is our final authority. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. As I was writing this up, I was um, reminded uh, of a prayer. Some of you will know it. Some of you will never heard of it. It doesn't matter. Uh, prayed by um, a Dr. S.M. Lockeridge in the 1980s. And some of us have been around for that long. will remember it. It went around as a little tape. He was uh, one of the ministers of... Calvary Baptist uh, Church in San Diego has since gone to be the Lord. Um, But I was reminded of this prayer. I've not thought about it for ages. And um, he was asked one day to close in prayer at the end of a service. And uh, inspired by the Holy Ghost, he spoke out this prayer. And uh, I'm going to close with his prayer today. The Bible says, my king is a seven-way king. 
He is the King of the Jews. That's a racial king. He's the King of Israel. That's a national king. He's the King of righteousness. He's the King of the ages. He's the King of heaven. He's the King of glory. He's the King of kings and He's the Lord of lords. That's my King. Well, I wonder, do you know Him? David said, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth His handiwork. My King is a sovereign. And King, no means of measure can define His limitless love. No far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of His shoreless supplies. No barriers can hinder Him from pouring out His blessings. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know Him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's Son. He's a sinner's Saviour. He's the centrepiece of civilization. He stands in the solitude of Himself. He's august and He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He is the highest personality in philosophy. He is the supreme problem in higher criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine of truth theology. He is the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. He's the miracle of the age. He is the superlative of everything good that you choose to call Him. He's the only one qualified to be the all-sufficient Saviour. I wonder if you know Him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathises and He saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and He guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent and He beautifies the meagre. Oh, I wonder if you know Him today. Well, my King, He's a key. He's a key. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know Him? His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His Word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous and His yoke is easy and His burden is light. I wish I could describe Him to you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get Him out of your mind and you can't get Him off of your hand. He can't, you can't outlive Him and you can't live without Him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand Him, but they found out they couldn't stop Him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in Him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. Herod couldn't kill Him. Death couldn't handle Him. And the grave couldn't hold Him. Yes, that's my King. That's my King. Yours is the Kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. Amen. God bless you. Oh, come on, church. Can we lift up some praise to the King of Kings all across this place? Come on, stand to your feet. Lift your hands and lift up a shout of praise to King Jesus. King Jesus. His name is Jesus. That's who we serve. His name is Jesus. That's who we follow. His name is Jesus. That's who we surrender our lives to and say, use us, Lord. 
here we are surrendered. I just believe God is doing some things in our hearts today, all across this place. On an individual level, I don't know what it is for you, but the Spirit of God is here. And I wonder if we can just take a moment. Why don't you close your eyes? This, let this not just be a moment of a great shout and then we leave this place and we're the same. God wants to change you from the inside out. And His Spirit is working in us in this moment. So Holy Spirit, right now, I pray that you would do a work in our hearts. Fall afresh on us. God, we are hungry for you. Church, why don't you take your seats for just a moment? You know, maybe you're here today and you're in this service and you don't know God. And you're hearing us sing about this King Jesus who, who is the King of resurrection, who defeated death and the grave and he rose again. And you're in this environment and you're, you're seeing us with a passion, lifting our voice and lifting our hands. And maybe you don't understand what it's all about. I want you to know that God wants to know you. So much that he sent his son Jesus to come and live on the earth. And then he died for us. He took on our sin and our shame and our guilt and he died for us. And really the problem is sin and we have this thing called sin that distances us from God. But because of Jesus, we can live in relationship with our Creator. So maybe you're here today and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. But you're in this environment and you're like, there's something calling me. There's something pulling me to know this God that these people are singing about. I want to give you an opportunity to make a decision. So I wonder all across this place if we can bow our heads, close our eyes. If that's you today, you, you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. Or maybe you made a decision a long time ago and circumstances of life have gotten in the way and you've fallen away. And you would say, I am far from God. Today is your opportunity. Do not let this moment pass you by. God is pulling you. He's calling you. He's longing for you. So with eyes closed and with head bowed, all you got to do is, I'm going to say this prayer and you can say it in your heart after me. And if you pray that prayer, you just have to slip up your hand. And some of our team are just going to put a little book in your hand just to acknowledge that you've made that decision so I'm going to pray this prayer and say it with me in your heart Father God I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me I'm sorry for all the wrong things that I've done and today I repent I choose today to follow you come into my life be the Lord of my life I follow you, Jesus. So with eyes closed and head bowed, if that's you right now, you're praying that prayer, why don't you just slip up your hand across this place? I see that hand over there. Hands going up. Just keep it up. Our team are on their way to you. It's 
This is amazing. Hands going up all around the room. People making decisions to follow Jesus. Just going to give it one moment longer. If that's you, saying today is my day. Maybe you've been coming to the services for a while now, but you've not made a decision. And today you want to make that decision. Take this moment. Amazing. Hey, you can lift your hands. Lift your head, sorry. Open your eyes. Can we just say thank you to God for people coming to know salvation? Oh, come on, church. Can we say thank you to God for people coming to know salvation, to know Jesus? Hey, listen. If you prayed that prayer, if you made that decision, I want you to know that's a great decision. In fact, it's the best decision you, you ever will make in your life. You can't have life without Jesus. And we would love to help you with some of your next steps. We've got an amazing team of people. You would have received this book. Uh, we've got an amazing team of people who would love to help you. After the service, just head over to my right over there. Our team would love to pray with you. They don't want to leave you just making a decision. They'd love to help you with some next steps. So head over to my right over here and the team would love to pray for you. But listen, if Pastor Malcolm's message had touched your heart and you're saying, I would like some prayer just for things in my life. Maybe you're a uni student and it's tough right now. Do you know what I'm saying? And you're like, I've got my dissertation. This is, this is all crazy. I just need someone to pray with me. Our team are also available for you at the end of our service. You can head over to the response lounge over here. Have you enjoyed being at church? Yeah. Come on, why don't we stand together? Can we say thank you to Pastor Malcolm for that message? Thank you, boss. Hey, do not head off after the service. We've got our atrium cafe open. You can head out the doors and to my left and connect with each other. Let's be family today. And if you're a young adult, 18 to 30, we're going to be hanging out after the service. So you can also head out to the atrium and we're going to gather in the atrium also. Hey, next week is Mother's Day. Don't forget it. Your little reminder to buy your mom some flowers. A gentle reminder for me. We're going to be celebrating Mother's to, uh, next week in our service, a very special Mother's Day service. So why don't you bring your mom along? We're going to celebrate together our mothers. But it's been great to, to be church together. Allow me to pray for you as we leave today. Father, I thank you because your presence isn't just limited to a Sunday morning. You are with us every single day. And you are helping us. I pray, God, that we would not leave this here, God, but we would take everything you've taught us this morning into our weeks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, church.